Somebody may have shared this video with you or told you that you need to watch it and right now you're thinking 40 minutes, ain't nobody got time for that. I think you do. I challenge you to, to watch this film, to watch this video. I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, I don't care if you're young or if you're old. I truly feel and believe that this is what every girl in the world needs to know. Not just here, but what she needs to know. I hope you watch this, I hope you share it, I hope that you help spread this message of value and self-worth to the ends of the earth. Thanks. I, I feel like this is the single most important day of school for me for the, the entire year. I look forward to this day every single year, he and here's why. I I'm here because I care for you. I think you need to know that. I'm not selling something, okay, I'm not trying to get more hits on YouTube, I'm here because I care for you. I care. I'm here because so many people are so unwilling to have this type of a conversation with you. So many of you are so desperate for information in this realm of life that you are grasping at lies that you are being told through social media and magazines and television. I'm here for the the 56-year-old mom who last year hugged me in a department store randomly. Talk about awkward moment, right? She comes up and gives me a hug and she goes, you're, you're that guy from that health talk. My daughter showed me this talk and, and she went on to tell me with, with, with tears streaming down her face that, that she had spent 56 years of her life never thinking, never believing that she was beautiful. And how even for that 40 minute talk, she felt that. I do this talk for the girl who's sitting in here right now. Who feels like she's some sort of a freak. Some sort of a weirdo. Because she's not, she hasn't had, she hasn't been in relationships. She doesn't have people texting her. Maybe she doesn't wear makeup. Maybe she doesn't date around, fool around, mess around. She's thinking about caving. She's thinking about giving in to what society has created for you as this mold of what it means to be a young woman. I do this talk for the girl in India. I've never even been to India. Who emailed me last year in broken English explaining that nobody in her life had ever told her that she was worth waiting for. I do this talk for the girl in here, sitting here right now, who's living a lie. She's living a lie. She's dressing how she thinks she needs to dress. She's acting how she thinks she needs to act. She's talking how she thinks she needs to talk. She's flirting how she thinks she needs to flirt to fit in. So unwilling to show the world who she really is because she's so scared of being rejected or being unloved. I'm here for the 43% of young women who are growing up in fatherless homes without a dad at home, 43%, many of them sitting right here in these chairs, who don't have a man in their life who are telling them that they're beautiful, telling them that they deserve to be treated like princesses rather than prostitutes. I couldn't sleep last night knowing that for some of you, I might be the only man in your life who's telling you these things. I do this talk for my daughter someday. My wife and I have been married for eight and a half years and we're starting to think about having a family. And I do this talk for my daughter someday because I, I want her to grow up in a world where, where, where being beautiful doesn't have anything to do with what you look in the mirror or the size of your waist, but the quality of your character and your personality, and your intellect, and your sense of humor, and your creativity. I do this talk for the hundreds and the thousands of people I've heard from locally and globally who have said this phrase to me. This phrase haunts my dreams. This phrase gnaws at my soul. They say over and over and over again, I wish Somebody would have told me this sooner. 
I wish somebody would have told me this sooner. Why aren't people telling people this? Why aren't parents, why aren't teachers, why aren't more people having conversations like this? I hate that phrase. And I made a decision five years ago in my life that I would be that somebody for anybody who's willing to listen. Regardless of how difficult it is or how awkward it is or how many people hate on it or comment mean things on YouTube or whatever, I want to be that somebody for anybody who's willing to listen. Because life is too short for you to not know what I'm about to tell you. And I need you to know it. You need you to know it. This is not what, what every girl in the world needs to hear. This is what every single girl in the world needs to know and she needs to know it in here. So my first point, first thing that you need to know, turn to your neighbor say, buckle up. <laughs> the first thing you need to know is that you need to know you are valuable. Write that down. You need to know you are valuable. Because a girl who knows she is valuable will not allow herself to be treated like she's not. A girl who knows she is valuable will not allow herself to be treated like she's not. Some of you desperately need to know this today. You've allowed yourself to be treated like you are not valuable. You have, you've not known your full value and worth, maybe for your whole life. Because value is so much more than thinking that you are pretty. Value is so much more than thinking that you are beautiful. Value is knowing that you are worthy of somebody's respect, of somebody's unconditional love, and of somebody's fair treatment. You are worth somebody's best. Not their seconds, not their leftovers. You're worth their best. But we have a problem in our society right now. We live in this culture of comparison. With social media, we constantly, you constantly saturate yourself in this world where you are comparing yourself to everybody else around you. Every time you open your feed, every time you open social media, you see this culture where we show the best and we hide the rest. We're not showing who we really are. We're showing that one picture that we deem worthy for the world to see. We take 70 selfies before we get that one that's just right in the right light with the right angle and the dine filters and all of that before we post it and share it. And we hide the rest of who we are and who we actually are. We're constantly comparing our behind the scenes life to everybody else's highlight reel. And you swipe and you swipe and you swipe through feeds comparing yourself to people that aren't you. And celebrities that, that maybe, maybe you need to recognize, you need to realize that, that many of these people have their own photographer. <laughs> they have their own makeup team and hairstylist. They've got their own social media team and, and, and personal trainer and dietitian. yet you sit there on the couch <laughs> eating your Cheetos, swiping and just, oh, hating on yourself because you don't look like that, because you don't throw on a swimsuit and just look like that, because you don't just pop out of bed and look like that. And we're doing damage to our, our, our self-worth and our self-value simply because we're comparing ourselves to every other person. But what you need to recognize and what you need to realize is, is she is not you. The person next to you is not you. And you being different, you looking different, that in of itself is beautiful. Can you imagine if we all looked the same? We all acted the same? How boring our world would be? Yet so many of you are trying to force yourself and squeeze yourself into this mold that you think is the one type of person that can have success and happiness and, and in good relationships. You believe the lie as being perpetuated and perpetuated. You need to know that you are valuable. <laughs> You need a constant tape playing in your head of positive messages. Shoot, you get enough hate from the people around you. Middle school girls are mean. <laughs> you guys are mean to each other. 
You say mean things to each other. You call each other names. You tear each other down. You need a constant tape in your head, picking yourself up. Some of you are your own worst enemy. You're your biggest bully. You look in the mirror and you tear yourself down every single day. You are so critical and so judgmental of who you are. You need to be your biggest cheerleader. You need to be your best fan rather than the other way around. Because nobody's ever going to believe in you unless you believe in yourself. Nobody's ever going to love you enough unless you love yourself, who you are. No one will ever value you enough unless you start to value yourself. You need to know that. You need to get that. Some of you need to protect what you say to yourself and the things that you say and how you treat yourself and how you tear yourself down. One of the most beautiful things that you can do is to love yourself. One of the most attractive things, okay, as a guy, one of the most attractive things in a girl is that she loves herself and is confident in who she is on the good days and the bad days, on the good hair days and the days where you look in the mirror and you're just like, what happened to me while I was sleeping, okay? That's attractive. I read a quote that beauty is not about being perfect. It's about loving yourself and owning what you have and, and who you are. You need to love yourself enough to be yourself. Turn to three people around you and, and just, just look them in the eye and say, you are valuable. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Look them in the eye. Tell them you are valuable. Okay, now, now, now go with me here. Listen. What if in our school, what if that's how we talk to each other? <laughs> what if that's how middle school girls talk to each other? Affirming each other rather than tearing each other down. Can you imagine the culture in our school, how that would change? You guys call each other names. You call each other sluts and hoes and skanks and a bunch of other words that I can't even say in school. <laughs> and you expect the guys to treat you well? You expect the guys to have nice names for you when you're setting the standard for what it's okay to call each other? You want to change how guys talk about girls? Start changing how girls talk about each other. How you talk about yourself. Set that standard higher for what's acceptable. Like I said, one of the most beautiful things you can do is love yourself. You need to love yourself enough to be yourself. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to fit into a mold that's not you. Some of you are sitting here. Oh, I skipped this. I read this study. I read this study where this girl interviewed and she surveyed hundreds of different guys. And she asked him this question. She said, if you could change one thing, one physical thing about your girlfriend or your wife or your significant other or your partner, what, would, would you change it? Would you change it? Many of you think that guys would respond like, yeah, you know, I'd make some things a little bigger, maybe some things a little smaller, maybe some things a little less wrinkly or whatever else, okay? But she said overwhelmingly the response was no. I wouldn't change a thing. I like her just how she is. And, and the funny thing from this study, from this research that I found, that she commented that, that most of the guys wrote in and said, I wouldn't even have noticed the flaws unless she had said something herself. That when we're constantly complaining about things that we don't like about ourselves, we're pointing out to everybody else and they're, they're starting to believe what we say about ourselves. You need to recognize and know that what people believe about you largely has to do with what you believe about yourself. Some of us need to change that. You got to love yourself enough to be yourself. Some of you are sitting here and you're saying, you know what, Kowser, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my story. You don't know my, you don't know my family. You don't know my upbringing. You don't know how people treat me. You don't know any of that. And to be honest, you're exactly right. I don't. But I don't need to, to tell you the truth that I'm about to tell you. Before I do, I had somebody write in last year. 
email and, and whatnot. I hear from a lot of people who watch this video. And she's, she, she was a, a victim of rape. She had been raped. She talked about, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to give, you know, uh, set, set boundaries and whatnot, but those were taken from me. Those were taken right away from me. And how she felt damaged and how she felt unlovable and unworthy and, and not valuable. But what I need you to know is that the experiences of yesterday or last year or last year or what happened to you or what they said about you or what you did at this age or this time, that doesn't change your value. It doesn't change your value. It doesn't change your worth. You need to know that. Which is incredibly difficult in a culture where now one in five women are victims of sexual assault. Where we now feel damaged or, or unlovable. I've got an analogy that I think will help drive this home. Um, this is a, a real $50 bill. This is not a trick, okay? How many, how many of you, if I was just like giving this away, if I was like first person with their hand up gets it, how many of you would be like, uh, I'll take it? You don't want it? Raise, raise your hand if you're like, yeah, I'd take it, okay? A free $50 bill, okay? All of you, okay? Um, what if, though, what if? Go with me here. Go with me, okay? What if I took this and I just, like, just crumpled it up? How many of you are like, I still take it? <laughs> okay, okay. What if I, like, threw it on the ground and, like, I, I, like, stepped on it and there's, like, dirt in my shoes and there's, like, juices in the carpet or whatever, okay? And, like, how many of you... It's got a little tear in it now. It's torn. How many of you, I'd still take it. Okay. Okay, what if I was like, I spit on it. I didn't actually spit on it because that would be gross and i got to use this again for next period. <laughs> Pretend I spit on it. How many of you would be like, I might wash it, but i got to eat food, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Why though? I mean, look, look at this. I mean, it's got spit on it. It's all. I mean, it's like tore up. It's like all crumpled up. Why? Why? Why do you still want it? Why do you still want it? It's still valuable. The value has not changed. And what I need you to desperately know is that some of you have been stepped on. Some of you have been crumpled up. Some of you have been torn or spit on, talked about, lied about. What you need to know is your value has not changed. You are still so valuable, much more than $50. Don't you dare let the experiences of yesterday shape the opinion of who you can be today. Every single person, every single one of us in here has the right to change, the right to a different future. And sure, the experiences that we've had, they shape who we're going to be, but they don't define us. Unless we choose to. Unless we choose to let them. Use your story to help other people. Know that you're valuable. Second thing you need to know. You need to know that you need to guard your heart. Guard it with a lock and a key. You need to guard who you allow into your life, into your heart, into your relationships, into your head. What I think is so funny about today's, today's world is we have like security and passwords for everything. How many of you have a passcode on your phone? Because <laughs> you don't want like your little brother to be getting in there and like reading your text message and going and telling your mom. You don't want your parents like creeping on your phone, right? We got passcodes. Some of you change it every night. It's like a six digit pin that you change every three hours so that nobody hacks into it and locks into it, right? We got security systems on our houses, okay? We, we, put, we put sunscreen on our bodies, especially in Montana, because the sun only shines like three months out of the year. When we come out in the sun, we look like a lobster. If we don't put some sunscreen on, right? Right? Somebody? Yeah? Okay? Um, we, we protect ourselves in all these different ways. We guard ourselves in all these different ways. But yet, we will let somebody into our life, into our heart, into our relationships, simply because he's fine. Simply because he's got a six pack, <laughs> simply because he's just, oh man, just, I mean, just look, I mean, come on, I mean, give, give me some slack, cows, I mean, look at that, right? <laughs> you giggle because you know it's true, we, 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 we don't guard our heart. We're so obsessed with dating, so obsessed with dating, 
especially in the middle school, especially in the high school. I love, I just like hear people be like, so-and-so, did you hear? Oh my gosh, he's dating her now and she said this about her and then she's gonna beat her up after school. It's like this whole like, like soap opera that we've got here at the middle school or even at the high school. We're so obsessed with dating. And I believe that we are so obsessed with dating because of three reasons. I think that we feel, and I felt this way in high school, that it's expected of us. It's expected of us. Nod your head if you might feel a little bit that it's, it's, it's expected of you. That if somehow, if a girl like sneaks through the system and she gets to the age of 18 or maybe even like 25, OM goodness, right? She gets to 25 and she's never been kissed. She's never gone on a date. She's never had a serious relationship. Shoot, she might as well get her knitting needles and start knitting sweaters with the old ladies and start walking in the mall, right? Because she's never going to find love, right? She's, nev she's never going to find a spouse. We're told this lie. And we believe it to the point where we force ourselves into relationships. I heard from a, a mom. She wrote in, she, she wrote me an email after watching the video last year. We talked about dating in the video a lot last year. If you haven't seen that one, go back and see it. It's got some more truth. It's a lot different, but it's good. Um, she wrote in and she said she's got a 16 year old daughter who had never had a boyfriend, who had never gone on dates before. And her mom was like, literally like, you need to, honey, you need to get out there, right? You need to start working it. You need to start, you need to start attracting some guys. She was a little worried about her. And her daughter had just watched this talk that I gave last year. And she sat her mom down. She got all cows up in her grill and was like, I do not, mom. I need to value myself and I need to guard my heart. And some of us need to recognize that, that we might get even pressure or advice from our parents or other people in our lives that are telling us that we need to be physical, we need to be sexual, we need to be fooling around, sleeping around, messing around, dating around. Otherwise we're missing out or we're somehow going to end up alone and, and lonely. We date a lot of times because of status or because of looks. I know that's how it was for me in, in middle school. I know that I can speak for most of the guys that we talked in health with last week, right? This, this conversation has never happened with a middle school boy. You know what? I just, I just love her. She's just got this inner beauty. Just like this glow. Like I just, I'm just drawn to her personality. Said no middle school boy ever. <laughs> okay? That has never happened. Okay? We base our relationships off of, dang, she's fine. <laughs> I want to be walking down the hall with her. Hey, everybody, everybody, you see who's walking down the hall with me? I mean, you see her dress, right? I mean, you see that? It just makes me so much cooler as a guy. Right? Now you might be a little less shallow than the guys, but <laughs> not a whole lot. We base our relationships off of looks, off of status. How is this person going to benefit my status or my reputation? Now maybe some of you are a little bit deeper than that. You're like, uh-uh, Kowser, uh-uh. No, that's not me. I'm not that shallow. I'm trying to find the one. I'm trying to find the one. Because every chick flick that you have ever seen, now trust me, I've seen, I've seen plenty. I got two sisters and a wife. I've seen my, my fair share of chick flicks. Every chick flick is talking about the one. You gotta find the one. And so many of you, you're shopping for the one. You're looking for the one. You're dreaming of the one. You're praying for the one, right? And it's like, I think we need to flip this around a little bit. What if instead of looking for the one, dreaming of the one, you focused on being the one. Some of you are writing that down. You're like, that is tattooable. That's tweetable. What if instead of focusing on finding the one, you focused instead on being the one? Because so many times our downfalls in relationships is we are broadcasting our own insecurities, our, our own areas of unhappiness, we broadcast that onto other people, expecting them to make us happy, expecting them to make us whole. That's not their job. That's not a relationship's job. There will be no person on earth that will make you happy if you yourself can't be happy. If you are not whole yourself, if you have not figured things out yourself in your own identity and your own value and your own personality, Somebody else is not going to do that for you. Because relationships are meant to complement you. They're not meant to complete you. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're not meant to complete you. They're meant to simply 
compliment you. And yeah, they should boost your happiness. And yeah, they should make you feel more valuable. But you need to get that on your own before you go trying to be in a relationship. And side note, you're going to be in relationships for the rest of your life. <laughs> You're going to be in relationships for the rest of your life. And with relationships comes drama. How many of you would like a little less drama in your life? Some of you got two hands up, right? And a foot. You're like, yes, please. Okay. Enjoy being single. Focus on being yourself and the best person that you can be rather than finding the one. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that you need to like wear turtlenecks the rest of your life and you need to like sit at home watching Disney Channel with your parents on Friday night and you can never talk to boys and you better not be texting, you better stay off of Snapchat, you better not be doing any of that. Okay, I'm not saying that. Tony never said he's not saying that. What I am saying is, is this. If you are a person who is not dating right now, and maybe you are a person who's not spending the average of 65 minutes a day. The average teenage girl spends 65 minutes a day working on her appearance. Maybe you're a person who, who, who doesn't do those things. What I want to encourage you, keep being different. Keep being different. Okay? Don't, don't sell out. Don't, don't, don't believe the lie that you need to be a different person or act a certain way to be valuable. It's not true. And what, I, what, I, what else I want to say is if you are, maybe you are in a dating relationship, okay? Maybe you are believing that lie that you need to, you know, act a certain way or look a certain way. I would ask you just to stop for two seconds and ask yourself why. Why? What are you expecting to get out of this relationship? Why, why are we dating? Why are we spending 65 minutes a day in the mirror putting on makeup, I saw a 12-year-old, sixth grader, walking down the hall in high heels, a mini skirt, and eyelash extensions. She's 12 years old. Last year, she was in the elementary school. Why are we doing this? Why are we spending so much time putting on this face? Many of you would answer, because I want people to like me. I want people to notice me. Then show them you. Show them who you are. Because if somebody's not going to like you for who you are, then you shouldn't even be with that person anyway. If they're only going to like you because of this face you put on, or this get up that you wear, or this shirt that you wear, that's not a relationship you should be in in the first place. Some of us need to ask ourselves these questions of why. Why are we doing these things? Why are we so dating obsessed? I, I, was, I was a lot like this in middle school. Not the mini skirt and the eyelashes. Not like that, okay? <laughs> I, was, I, I dated this way in middle school, in high school, where, where you, you look for relationships that are going to better your reputation or simply based on looks, okay? I, until I met this girl. Hey, girls. My name is Megan, and I just wanted to introduce myself and to share a little bit about my story. Um, I know Noah is going to tell you about our relationship and just wanted to tell you some of my own background um, and also just to say how lucky you guys are to have someone like him in your life that's willing to share with you about really difficult topics. I chose very early in my life to make firm decisions for myself about my sex life and the way that I was going to interact with boys. Um, a lot of my decision making was helped by having a dad that was really involved in my life. Um, he encouraged me to um, to save myself and to wait to have sex until I was in a committed relationship. Um, and I know that that sometimes can seem like an impossible goal, but I just wanna encourage you that it's totally possible and it doesn't mean that you're sitting at home alone with your parents um, watching Gilmore Girls or something like that. Um, I had a wonderful high school experience. I had a great time. I did well in school, I participated in sports, um, I, I had a lot of friends and was popular, um, but all of that without compromising my morals, compromising the goals that I had set for myself. Um, this goal that I had is something that I kept in mind whenever I started a relationship with 
uh, a boy and I didn't really date very much um, like have boyfriends I would go out on dates and hang out with guys um, but I always kept this goal in mind I always let them know what my boundaries were and what um, I wanted my future to look like and even when I started my relationship with Noah I told him right away um, that I I wanted to wait until I was married to have sex. Um, so that is a big part of how I actually reached my goal, um, was by being open about it, being confident in who I was, and not afraid to stand up for myself. Um, and I think that people find that attractive, that confidence and willingness not to compromise. So anyway, I just wanted to say hi, um, to share a little bit of my story, and like I said, encourage you um, in this decision, knowing that it is possible, and it's possible to have a fun, single life until you are in that committed relationship. Thanks. Bye. She, uh, she changed everything for me, and um, we started off as friends. Just as friends, she didn't even like me at first, <laughs> actually, truth be told. Um, we started off as friends, okay? and we had, we had a year of just being friends and setting that foundation for um, our future relationship. And, and before we even got into a relationship, before we even started dating, she let me know right quick where her boundary line was and what she knew was acceptable for her, what she was going to allow in her life. And I found that to be so refreshingly amazing. I had never encountered a girl like that who just threw down and was like, look, this is what I'm about. This is how I value myself. And if this isn't what you're, if, if you're not okay with that, then see ya. I found that so attractive that a girl valued herself that much, cared about herself that much, okay, that she'd not be afraid to throw down and to hold that boundary, okay? And so we, we set boundaries and we set them high. And we, and we were able to achieve that goal and to save that special and powerful, amazing thing for when we did get married. And I feel like this foundation of, of making future-minded decisions is one of the things that, that, that makes our marriage so successful. And it makes, makes us such in a, in, a, in a happy relationship now. After eight years of, of, of marriage, um, that was our picture on our eighth wedding anniversary this year. Um, everybody say, aww. Aww. Part of our success was, was that foundation of friendship and not getting into this dating drama and, and all of these, these games that we play, but just setting boundaries and, and holding them and maintaining those boundaries. And I found that to be so attractive in her. Okay. The last thing I need you to know and I need you to know this. You need to know that you are worth waiting for. <clears throat> you need to know that you are worth waiting for. Don't settle. Everybody say, don't settle. Don't settle. Everybody say, don't settle. Don't settle. don't settle. don't settle. You need to know that you're worth waiting for. Remembering that a girl who knows she's valuable will not allow herself to be treated like she is not. Don't settle. I read the other day that 61% that of teenage girls said they feel pressure to have sex. 61% feel pressure to have sex or to be sexually active. And, and I read, this was so depressing, I read that most of those who do, most of those who do have sex or are sexually active out of a fear of losing the person that they're with. It's not because they feel like they're ready or they feel like they want to give that incredibly special piece of themselves away to this person. It's because they're scared that the person will leave if they don't. And, and, and if a person in a relationship does not respect your boundaries, if they do not respect that desire for you, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect because it's just showing you right then and there how selfish and shallow they actually are. And you can kick them to the curb. Because if they do not honor and respect your boundaries, they don't respect you as a person. They might say, I love you, but I love you might mean, I, I like you, I really like myself, and I just want to have sex. To be honest. 
I love you might mean that because, because for, for, for girls and for guys, sexual experiences affect you differently. They affect you differently. Okay? They affect you differently because with, with, with girls, when, when, you, when you have a sexual encounter, um, something in your brain, I learned this the other day, it's going to make me sound really smart. My wife taught it to me. She teaches science. I teach gym. She's a lot smarter than I am. Okay? When, when, when you have sex with somebody, in your brain it releases a hormone called oxytocin. Oxyto oxytocin is a hormone that's also released when you have a baby. Okay? And, it, and it turns this little screaming lump of flesh into the most important thing in your entire life. It bonds you with that tiny little creature like nothing else could bond you. That same hormone is released in your brain when you have sex. You're bonded to that person like no other experience on this planet. You need to know that that is powerful. For guys, a lot of times, that, that, that doesn't happen. They don't have that hormone that's released. For girls, overgeneralizing here, this is overgeneralizing, but girls, if they have sex, they might realize, they might think, finally, I found somebody who's going to love me, who's going to treat me well, who's going to never leave me. And the guy's thinking, finally, I got to have sex. <laughs> you need to recognize and understand the power of, of, of the pressure that you're going to experience. Because you're going to experience pressure. If you don't experience it now, you're going to experience some pressure. You need to know that. But, but at the end of the day, I think you need to realize, what, what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? Sadly, as a, as a female, you kind of get hated on either way. If you hold out and you set boundaries, they hate on you because you're prude. <laughs> if you give in, you sleep around, fool around, mess around, they hate on you, and they call you a slut. The haters are going to hate either way. I think my friend Taylor Swift explained that to us pretty well in a song this year. The haters are going to hate, 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 hate. Okay? They're going to hate on you anyway. What do you want to be known for? What do you want to stand for? A girl who values herself so much that she's not willing to sleep around, fool around, mess around? Or somebody who gives into the pressure to try to fit this mold of who she feels she needs to be like? I want you to, I, I want you to, I hope for you, you set boundaries and you set them high. Okay, because sexual behaviors are extremely powerful and extremely special. And outside of a loving, committed relationship, much like a marriage, they can often cause damage. They can often cause destruction. They can often cause regret. I don't want that for any of you. I need you to know that you hold the key to your own heart. You hold the key. You can decide what, who gets let in, what gets let in, what thoughts you're going to have, what thoughts you're going to entertain, what boundaries you're going to have. You hold the key. And I bought every single one of you a key. Now you might think this is cheesy, you might never wear it, but I want you to keep it. I want you to remind yourself that you hold the key. You make the decisions. You are the captain of your own ship. You decide where you go and what you do and how valuable you want to come across and how valuable you want to seem to yourself. You hold the key to your own heart. And the last thing, and I've used this illustration before, is that sexual, bound, sexual experiences, they have a permanency. They have a permanency. That we can't, we can't undo them. We can't undo them. And what happens when we give in, and when we are physical, when we are sexual, they get to keep that. They get to keep that. If they don't become your future spouse, they get to keep that. And maybe it's too hard. Maybe it's too difficult to have boundaries. Maybe it's too difficult to all the pressure. That you just want to fit in. You want to be liked. You can't, you can't set boundaries. You can't hold out. And maybe you do that again and again and again and again. And, and what happens and what I see so many times with young people is you get to a point in time in your life where you, you, you meet somebody, you find somebody who you want to spend the rest of your life with, who you love more than life itself. And this is what you have to give? This is all you have left? You don't get to go back and like pick up all these pieces and like glue this back together and like make everything okay and erase all those old memories and other things? You don't get to do that. This takes discipline. This takes 
boundaries. This takes some serious value. This is the most special gift that you could ever give another person. This is what my wife gave me on our wedding night. The most special thing that I've ever received. The most special thing you could ever give to somebody. This is difficult. This takes some serious value and self-worth and future-minded thinking. And, and I will tell you that it, it literally broke my heart in half to look her in the eye and explain to her that I hadn't done the same thing. That I'd been thinking of myself. I wasn't thinking of her. She had been thinking of me all the while she was in high school and all through college, even though she didn't know my name. And it hurt me so much to see her cry and to watch her weep, understanding that I caused her pain because I wasn't thinking of her. I was thinking of myself. And that's not a conversation I wish on anybody. And, and some of you, you, you hear that and you're like, crap, I'm, I'm, I'm halfway there. I've already messed up. I've already, blew, I've already blew it. I've, I've screwed up. No, 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 no. Here's what you need to get. There's nothing that you can do about yesterday. There's nothing that you can do. But, and it's a big but, but you can do everything about tomorrow. How beautiful if your story was, was similar to mine where, yeah, maybe you've messed up or maybe you've, you've had some bumps along the way or maybe people have taken something from you that is, it, you can't give back, but, but you made a decision, you made a commitment that one day in eighth grade and you started thinking toward the future. You started dating toward the future. You started valuing yourself so much that you wouldn't just let yourself be thrown around and tossed around just to get attention. And I hope that you do that. I hope that you realize that. And, and I have just a, a tool that I think will help you. We have these little cards. And, and this card is, 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 it says it's a commitment not to perfection. <laughs> because we're not perfect people. We're not, we can't fool ourselves. We're not perfect people. It's a commitment to perseverance, knowing that sexual behaviors cannot be taken back. They are powerful and they are permanent. Today, everybody say today. today. Everybody say today. today. Today, I recognize that I hold the key to my own heart. I am valuable. I am worthwhile. I am important. I deserve to be treated with the highest respect. I am worth waiting for. I don't want you to leave today without getting one of these and one of these, if you want one. I hope that you know and understand that you are valuable, that you need to guard your heart, and that you are so worth waiting for. I hope that you know that. We both wanted to just thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Please take the opportunity to share it far and wide. We'd love every girl to hear this message and know that they will never regret making good decisions. It's our goal that every girl would know that she is valuable, that she is worthy, that she deserves respect, and that she holds the key to her own heart. If you want one of those commitment cards for yourself, there's a link down in the description you can download for yourself. If you want to see more videos and more talks like this, click on the subscribe link down here in the corner. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. <laughs>